Hello and welcome in guys to my in-depth guitar review channel. Today I got a very interesting guitar that I wanted to share with you for some time. It is the 2008 Gibson Les Paul Custom in Alpine White. And I chose this particular Les Paul Custom because it has aged beautifully. I'm going to fully disassemble this guitar, check out everything that makes it so special. Then I'm gonna do a basic tone demo and tell you my final opinion. This white custom is one of those guitars that I shouldn't have let go a couple of years ago. I used to own it back in 2017, it was my birthday and a friend was selling it, so I gave it to myself as a gift. And just look at it. That clear coat of nitro finish has turned absolutely yellow at this point. I remember that back in 2017 I didn't like aged guitars. I was aggravated by any scuff or dink on my guitars and the yellow nitro finish put me off back then. Most of you Les Paul custom owners probably know that, but it's not the paint that it's getting yellow, it's the nitro cellulose finish on top that's aging like this and it gets yellow over time, so the paint underneath it appears more yellow and not white. I will tell you more about the nitro cellulose finish in a minute. But let's check out the condition of this guitar. Seems to be in a good shape. Of course, there are some scuffs here and there. There is playing damage. It's a player's grey guitar. Beautiful ebony in contrast to the white. Finish checking here near the fingerboard. Some cracks on the knobs I notice. Nothing to be scared of. I'm really excited to check out this guitar in further detail. Let's quickly go back to that nitrocellulose lacquer. I'm gonna directly quote some information from guitar text. So nitrocellulose is considered to be more porous than the polyester or polyurethane with a thin, smooth and somewhat slippery texture that isn't quite as solid or constrictive. Many purists and luthiers therefore believe that a nitro finish allows a guitar's wood to breathe, yielding a more open sound and a greater sustain. The open sound though comes at a price because the softer texture does make it susceptible to cosmetic damage. This means that dings and scratches are more visible on guitars with nitro finishes and much easier to inflict. Nitro finish also wears away over time causing dulling in areas where you make regular contact with your guitar. I have a video of a 92 Gibson Les Paul custom wine red coming up. It is a perfect example of this dulling that they are talking about. Reading on, nitrocellulose also yellows with time, especially when exposed to excessive sunlight. This guitar came with several pamphlets explaining this exact phenomenon of the nitrocellulose finish yellowing over time. I'll show them to you. Apart from the above mentioned, small cracks can appear in the nitro finish after several years too. This occurs when a guitar is regularly exposed to different temperatures, as changes in climate causes wood to expand and contract. Nitrocellulose lacquer is thin and slightly porous, meaning that the wood it's applied to is more prone to this issue, as you've seen here in this example. Nitro ages differently from guitar to guitar. This one, you can see the zones where it has been played and touched more, like the back of the body, here on the neck, you can see the positions in which the player had touched it. He didn't go to the higher frets too much, he kept in this register over here. And honestly, back then in 2017, I didn't like that. So I sold this guitar to a friend and I foolishly sold it for a Kemper Profiler powerhead and I think it was 700 bucks or something like that. And boy have the prices skyrocketed during this period of 5 years. Now the guitar is worth easily $1500 more. And as I said, during this period I learned to appreciate aged guitars. People are paying crazy money for artificially aged guitars these days. Just check out what happened to the aged and signed run of Adam Jones Gibson guitars. And just to wrap up the talk about the finish of the guitar, I want to tell you about the alternative and it is polyurethane or polyester guitar finish. It is harder, it is more durable, doesn't yellow over time 
and I'm not a fan of it, to be honest. I have a ESP custom uh, Iron Cross with that type of finish, and it kind of feels cheaper because of it. I don't know. I just prefer the Nitro finish on the Gibsons. Most of you probably know, but keep in mind, if you're getting a Gibson, you're not always getting a Nitro finish. Be sure to try a guitar with a Nitro finish before you make that decision for yourself. The pros of Nitro finish might be cons for other people. Some people don't like the softer finish, they don't like dings, scratches, they don't like the way a guitar ages and the lacquer gets yellow. Another thing is that those guitars may need some special care and I'm gonna show you an example of this. Check out the area near the three-way switch. This happened to my Gibson Les Paul Custom Silver Burst as well. Because when you play this guitar the nitro finish gets even softer from the body heat and if you're using a t-shirt with a stamp on it, the stamp gets caught in the nitro finish. I have polished some of it off, but you can clearly see the residue of it. Most of you probably didn't even notice this if you have a different color guitar, but here in this case with the white one, you can clearly see it. And if you don't notice it and continue doing this over and over again, it gets deeper and deeper into the nitro finish, into the lower layers of it, because this is a layered finish. It gets layered over a couple of days. One layer dries, then the next one is applied and so on. So it gets into the lower layers and it stays there and it's not getting out even with guitar polish as I will demonstrate right now. Check out how satisfying this is. But since this is a soft finish, every time I'm doing this, I'm taking away some of the lacquer. So if you don't want this to happen, don't play with stamped t-shirts, turn them inside out, but for Christ's sake, don't play naked. Well, that polishing job was satisfying, at least for me. So let's go ahead and check out this guitar. So we've discussed the finish, but there are a lot more interesting things to cover in this guitar. So let's quickly go over the specs. We got mahogany body, two piece maple top on it, mahogany neck, beautiful ebony fingerboard, double humbuckers, bridge volume, neck volume, bridge tone, neck tone, two pneumatic stuff Nashville bridge and tailpiece, scale length is the comfortable 24.75 inches and the usual 12 inch radius. Jumbo frets, 22 of them, three way toggle switch, the usual Les Paul custom specs. Now let's dive deeper in with those pickup cavities because there is a lot to show there. And here it is, the Alpine white without the pick guard, pickups out of the way. And here is a surprise. The neck pickup cavity is not painted while the bridge one is. And I'm not even mad because I wanted to check out the paint underneath here and I wanted to check out the grain of the mahogany and the maple cap that they've put on top of it. And you can clearly see the separation of the mahogany and maple over here. Looks like a solid mahogany body and I mean solid and I will explain later on because this guitar is heavier. No long neck tenon here, just regular short. The usual routing for the three-way pickup switch. From here, under the pickups, goes to the electronics cavity. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to measure the thickness of the maple cap on this guitar with the caliper. What do we got over here? 13.6 millimeters or, come on, 0 0.53 of an inch. And back here it gets thicker, 15.5 millimeters. Look at the bridge pickup cavity. I was hoping to show you guys the original paint underneath the clear coat of the nitro finish. But I think there's some of it under here too. So this is not a perfect representation of the Alpine white. Still shows you how the nitro has aged and yellowed. But I think we're in luck because there is no clear coat over here. And on the edges you can kind of see the Alpine white way more whiter than the other one in the bridge cavity. One more thing before I close those pickups. I told you we have a two-piece maple cap on top of this mahogany body and at a certain angle you can kind of see where it separates over here. You see it guys? 
I want to move over to the pickups and they had been replaced on this guitar at one point it had EMGs yeah believe that and I want to check out if this is the original 490R 498T set this should be 490R it has the Gibson USA logo on it they seem to be the original set of pickups 498T over here but the only way to verify this is if I measure them with the multimeter and let's go ahead and do that first off we got the neck pickup position over here 7.64 switch it over to the middle position of both pickups 4, uh, 487 and then we got the bridge at 13.48 and yeah indeed this seems to be the original 490R 498T pickup set for the Gibson Les Paul Custom and boy have these puppies aged well look at here how the gold finish of the pickup cover has worn off during time by the contact of the palm I even like how these knobs cracked a bit inside and believe me there was a point in time that I absolutely hated any cracks, dings, scuffs on my guitars with the pickups out of the way we have the opportunity to check out the original color of the binding you see how white it is in contrast to the sides here on the body the side of the neck because the nitro finish has been applied on top of the binding creating the same illusion that the binding is yellow but it's white we got slanted black pickup rings for this guitar short screws for the neck pickup ring long screws for the bridge pickup ring which is always good oh man just look at how this bridge and tailpiece aged I love it here on the pickup as well look at how the gold finish has worn off here where it was in contact with the palm I've seen this on some artificially aged guitars anyway what we got here we got the Nashville style of bridge wider footing of the saddles for better intonation as they say this bridge seems to be in perfect shape I don't see any collapse on it here we can check out the bottom side the individual saddles both the tailpiece and bridge seem to be original for this guitar this tailpiece feels really really heavy in my hand I'm gonna put this one on the scale because I've never done this and I am curious of how much it weighs so the tailpiece is 86 grams or 3 ounces the bridge is 54 grams or 1.9 ounces and once again just for reference I want to have a better look of this bridge PW engraved on it individual saddles seems to be in perfect shape straight no collapse multiply binding on the top and the bottom binding on the neck with fret edge nips they are somewhat inconsistent here which leads me to believe that this had a fret job and they tried to save the nibs multiply binding on the headstock as well one piece mahogany neck and beautiful ebony fingerboard I love how this ebony contrasts with the white color of the guitar having a closer look of the grain you can clearly distinguish that this is ebony and not rich light mother of pearl inlays and they differ from each other look how the left one is much more pronounced than this right one that's in the center of the screen oh, buddy. That's measures out there. shut up mr caliper okay. the nut width is 43 millimeters or 1.69 inch the 12 fret measures at 52.7 millimeters or 2.07 inch thickness of the 12 fret is 24.5 millimeters or 0 0.96 inch the neck profile is comfortable for me 60 style C shape but this one is considerably chunkier than the rest of the Les Paul custom guitars that I have the nut seems to be the original bone one and I can tell that because I see the binding flushes on the side here 
but I think at some point somebody put way thicker gauge of strings and had to modify it a bit. We got the bell shaped truss rod cover Les Paul custom engraved on it, two screws, white on the bottom and here we can check out the truss rod nut seems to be in good shape the truss rod is not maxed out you can kind of see the grain of the mahogany neck through it it is adjusted by this Gibson truss rod key that comes with the guitar which conveniently has a Phillips screwdriver head on it too and it comes in this pouch over here and since the nitro finish is the main theme for this video, I wanted to show you guys what happens when we use those stands that we usually use on most of the guitars. Remember what we talked about the nitro finish. It is very soft and that's not a light guitar. When you put it on a stand like that, it rests on the headstock over here and it develops a stand rash. This happened to my silver burst as well. And look at the other side. It almost completely wore off the nitro finish on this side. You can see the paint. If you want to avoid stand rash like this, just don't use stands. Keep the guitar in the case or buy a special stand that it's made for nitro finish. It has this softer foam on it. I personally keep my Gibson Les Paul Customs in their cases. Oh man, check out this headstock. I love how the nitro finish has aged over here. You can see some small cracks, a yellowing of the mother of pearl logo and the diamond. Check out those tuner washers. They have this rose gold look to them that develop over time. Some patina on them. As I said, for a lot of people, this is a desirable effect. The back of this guitar is where the aging really shows. Let's see the three-way switch cavity. I'm not sure this is the original three-way switch. This guitar has been played a lot. And I think at some point it was reinstalled. Going over to the electronics cavity. It seems neat. It seems way too neat. When I bought the guitar back in 2017, it had EMG pickups installed in it. So I had my friends reinstall the original pickups and they seem to have done a better job than Gibson themselves because the soldering job of Gibson is usually really really messy original strap button here in the front and the same in the back and when you look closely you can see how the binding has cracked here where the guitar had rested on a stand or something like that and look at that aging man this is crazy set neck construction Comfortable for some folks, not too comfortable for me for the higher frets, so I stay away from them. And as you can see, the previous owner had done this too. He was playing mostly in this register from the first fret to the 12th. And you can see how he left marks from his fingers. He wasn't touching the higher frets, which is fine. Anyway, this is a mahogany neck, no volute. Check out, you can see the stand rash again, Gibson Custom logo grover tuners gold i really like those and over here at the top you can see the serial number starts with eight which is 2008 and a rash from a tuner as i will now demonstrate when you put a tuner or a capo over here it develops this rash over time i know that this is not a flat top body but i'm gonna take the opportunity and measure here near the three-way switch 52.4 millimeters and I wanted to give you guys one more look at that beautiful ebony fingerboard after I oiled it with Music Nomad F1 fingerboard mineral oil. The ebony fingerboard just pops with this guitar because of the yellowish white finish. I've put on the strings and the truss rod needed some adjustment because I switched the gauges. And I measured the truss rod with this Music Nomad tool. And then when I adjust the truss rod, I adjust the string height, measuring over here at the 12th fret. I was really surprised how heavy this guitar is. Almost 11 pounds. This is 1 pound heavier than my 76 Gibson Norlin era. Enough talk, let's hear this guitar play.
Just look at the amount of documentation this guitar came with. Okay, first let's start with the black case. They used this from the start of the 2000 until 2010, 11 I think, when they transitioned to the brown one. Certificate was black, they switched over to brown later on. <laughs> let's start exploring this library of documentation. First of all, we got the certificate of authenticity. You got the serial number CS83321, a cool number by the way. They were even nice enough to throw in a Gibson branded pick. Then we got the Gibson Gold warranty and the pre-pack checklist. The date on the bottom, the 5th of February 2008 and the serial number. Next up is the Gibson Customer Care Guide, which most of you had probably seen in the guitars that you got. Let's open it up. A nice Les Paul standard in it. Moving over to the, all the other interesting stuff that you haven't seen, probably. This one is... Make sure you pause and read all this because it's very interesting. Uh, basically, Gibson are trying to explain the characteristics of this uh, specific paint how it ages over time and that it shouldn't be considered as a defect. <laughs> Don't worry Gibson, we will not judge you too hard because this guitar has been set and adjusted for professional usage, light pick action. <laughs> Pause and read that. Mr. Dealer, in order to preserve the delicate coloring of this beautiful Gibson instrument, avoid displaying in show windows where it will be subject to direct or excessive sun rays. I think it's a bit too late for that. Following are some really useful instructions that I haven't seen in a guitar before. I know them because I've checked them on the internet, but humbucker pickup adjustment, how to adjust the pickup heights, and specifically the height is mentioned over here, which is really useful. I just haven't seen it uh, like this put in a guitar case. Next up, we got instructions for the tunomatic bridge, which are actually really useful so make sure you pause and read all of them and right here at the bottom product of gibson guitar corporation nashville tennessee and we got one more instruction that i haven't seen in a guitar case before is the gibson truss rod instruction on how to adjust your truss rod what is a truss rod why is a truss rod necessary how does a truss rod work how to adjust the gibson truss rod you got the figures here on what to do and what not to do. It's actually pretty useful stuff, so make sure you pause and read that if you haven't uh, seen videos, instructional on how to adjust the truss rod and things like that. Again, Gibson Custom Art and Historic, Nashville, Tennessee. Boy, oh boy, all of these instructions. I'm kind of worried, did you guys make it alright through 2008? Because look at all this and look what we get right now. One more thing over here, the pouch for the truss rod key. Greater tonal range, more brilliant performance. And right here in the back we have interesting instruction. When using the toggle switch in the center position, both volume controls should be turned on. Thank you for that. Important, be sure to use Gibson strings only. Wow, just look at all this, it's ridiculous. I can cover the whole guitar. Look what we're getting now and what we used to get. It's useful information. But there's a good chance if you're buying a Les Paul Custom that you know what you're doing. Closer look of this beautiful case before I put back the white beauty in it. Case is made in Canada. Man, I regret selling this guitar. This gorgeous white Les Paul Custom sounds just as heavy as it weighs. Fortunately for me, it belongs to a friend now and it's close by. And I'm sure he will let it go at some point, but I doubt it's gonna be for a camper head and a couple of bucks. Anyway guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing because I, I have a lot more content like this coming up. Which is your favorite Les Paul custom finish? Let me know in the comments.